absolutely. I mean, uh, this this whole uh, tweeting between the players was really a lot of fun. I mean, I have also got a lot of pleasure out of it. And you know, it kind of gave me the feeling that yes, Magnus got provoked after E4, he was for C5. However, things slow down because it uh, gets up to the Malotti structure. I mean, this is a very strategic uh, battle, very, very instructive all the time because a lot of, lot of typical plans for both sides. But which line? Yeah, uh -huh. Anish goes for Queen DC. This used to be my big, big favorite system, I think, ever since 95 or 96. When I first saw it, uh, the, this Queen DC line, I really fell in love with it. Simply that, uh, why this kind of sidestepping all those uh, big main lines? Alright, so basically the whole point is that usually this kind of structure uh, black plays, but uh, if black tries to play, for example, like the classical way, like castles, bishop e3, uh, castles, 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 bishop e7, yeah, this is like the absolutely classical, like queen d2, knight takes d4, bishop e4, bishop c6 f3, e5, all the typical moves of the position that might usually plays move like bc, knight d7, white does not train the bishops play bishop bc, knight c5, and we have seen hundreds of uh, classical games, usually the main plan was to play rook a b1, then to play rook fc1, for example, black was playing queen b6, rook fc1, queen b4, and one of the spinners was like rook c2, and then queen c1, and slowly kicking back the queen with a3, but when black plays the move of the with knight takes d4, then actually black wants a completely different structure. And that's why I'm saying that, you know, when I discovered this queen dc move, I got really attracted to it because if black plays the move like e5, like Magnus opted for, then I'm basically forcing the type of positions that I'm anyway willing to play from the white side if I'm already playing the Badozzi. So Magnus was a5 Hanish got bishop e3 and now now a move that surprises me honestly is the move bishop d4 this slightly comes as a surprise for me because as i previously showed after bishop c6 knight d7 often white is the one who beats his bishop from d4 not trading uh, the dark square bishops so i'm expecting that uh, if this is preparation that this is some new twist i mean it's definitely not the old classical wisdom of the position but uh, I'm really curious to see how Anish will justify his uh, strategy. All right, we're going to wait and find out. Meanwhile, we do have our first result. Sergey Karyak and Daniel Dubov are half to...
this doesn't seem to work, but I kind of understand what Magnus is trying to achieve here. It's on the board, but I got a feeling, Peter, that was it any other player, we would, our first instinct and our first thought would be that this idea has been missed. But you know, because it's Magnus playing, you always have a feeling that there's some deeper thought into it. Yeah, because otherwise he would be just extremely lucky to, to have this good record. <laughs> and I don't think that he's so lucky. I mean, it's... Anish down to, down to seconds makes the move King to F5. Yeah, King to F5. By the way, David Anton has beaten Ali Reza Firuza, so... That, uh, that uh, two bishops versus two knights battle was won by, by White with a pair of bishops. But okay, all eyes on this uh, game because this is a very, very scary position. Knight b4, yeah, the pawn on a2 is lost, but Black King is still. Who cares? Who cares yeah, with exactly. the Black King there? This is a very, very dangerous meeting there. But where is the weight exactly? I mean, in, no. So if I take k2, okay, am I blundering into something? Let's take a look. G4! King G4, wow! And okay. there's no check on G2. Exactly, and then rook okay, 7 check it. Wow, this is this is a very nasty trap. My Anish. I mean, it's not... Rook okay, okay, to play. King G4, that's it. Game over. If Anish plays King G4, he, he, that's it. And it's on the board. It's on the board and Anish leans back. He knows it's over. Magnus realizes what's happened. And that's it, there is no check on G2. There's no way to fight against Rook 8 7, and Magnus Carlsen resigns. Yeah, that's it. I mean, what a nasty trap, yeah, because it looked like, okay, where is the hidden move? And then 